Hello, 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 crafty friends. I have no view. Oh, that's nice. On the big TV. How are you guys doing today? Beautiful Saturday. I don't know how it is there. It is cold, cold, cold here in Tigard, Oregon. We have freeze warnings up for tonight. There we go. I have a welcome to my classroom, but I am not on camera yet. No, you're not. Because I'm on the other side of the room. Hitting the button. <laughs> hi, Maria. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Betty. Hi, Annette. Hi, Kim. Welcome. We have Bryce and Debbie today, and Teddy, if he decides to put in an appearance. There I am. I see myself. Hi guys! Oh, now I see my hands. Progress is being made. Uh, I do need to flip the camera because my watch is on my right hand. Let's see if that helps. No. Did you do it? Yes, I did it. Okay. There we go. I think we got the camera looking good. Oh, that must be fun, Annette. Hi, Jackson and Reagan. Hi, Maria. It's 58 there, huh? I don't know what it is here this afternoon. It's still got very brisk in the air, but it's warmer than it was earlier when I was wandering around. It's 52. Oh, it's 52 here at present, but I just had a alert come over my phone a few minutes ago that said, if you live in Tiger, cover your plants. It's going to freeze tonight. So... I don't know that we have a lot of plants we're going to worry about, but they said hello. <laughs> okay, just got your kit 15 minutes ago. Well, that is 15 minutes right in time. Do you have your um, die cutter available, Brenda? Grab your die cutter if you need to. Oh, Brenda says it's only 90 there. <laughs> okay, this is what we're going to make today, guys. We're going to make these beautiful layered 3D cards. We're going to take them out of paper that we have die cut from our books. And that says it's 74 now and 50 tonight. Oh, your package came in two days. I'm glad to hear that. That's good. Bodes well for the election, too. The things are moving that quickly. Here's another of our cards for today. They're beautiful. That does remind me there is something I didn't grab for class. I'm going to turn around and grab it. And here's our third card for today. And you're actually going to have materials to make even more than this, at least in terms of your die of your die cuts, if you use your um, if you use your download. I need this is what I'm going to use as my as my mat today. You can use a mouse pad, you can use all kinds of this stuff. This is the um, foam that my um, press to impress, my die cutting platform came in. And these, this makes a, just a most excellent embossing mat. <laughs> so I'm going to set that aside for the moment since I'm not embossing yet and get it out of my way. And I'll show you the tool that I'm going to use for embossing. If I can find it here, Margie put it away for me last night. <laughs> I'm going to use this one and maybe one smaller. These are from Hunky Dory. You can get them in all kinds of brands. But these are from Hunky Dory. I'm going to have these two out and available. We do have these in the store if you're interested in them, but I'm just going to set this off to the side for a minute. This is what I'm going to use to shape my petals. We'll be doing more work with these when we do look at our flower making later. I thought that would be a good one to do in the middle of the winter when we're when we're looking for flowers. Hi, Ruthann. Welcome. Uh, let's see, she's from Texas, and then there's Stephanie, hi Betty McSorley, Ruth Kelly, welcome everybody. Ooh, great, let's 
let's see how we can get going here. Um, for those of you who have your kits, and I heard a couple of you do, grab your kit and let's take a look at what's inside. The first thing you're going to find in your kit, mine's already out because I've already torn up my magazine and used a lot of it. When, you, when it comes, your magazine will have your die right on the cover like this. Look at the size of that die. I guesstimated it when I wrote my newsletter to be three and a half inches square. Let's see how I did. That is three and a half inches by three and three quarters inches. That is a big, beautiful, highly detailed die from Tattered Lace. Tattered Lace estimates the value. It says this die is worth um, 16 um, pounds, 99 pence. I know this would cost more than that. It probably would be more than that based on what I see of Tattered Lace prices. But even at that, this die would run more than your entire, or as much as your entire class kit today. So this is a really good value. So you get this right on the cover of your magazine. And if you take a look through your magazine, you're going to see they give you all kinds of suggested projects. This die is called Bouquet. And it's funny, they always say your, your die is free. You, in my mind, you're paying for the die and you get the magazine free, but they consider the magazine to be the higher value. Whatever, it doesn't matter. There's a price on the magazine and die combined, and that's what you get. Now, you also, they have all these wonderful patterns in here for ways that you can use this beautiful die and they there's a lot of them it's a lot of good good stuff they one of the things i appreciate that they're doing today and i mentioned this maybe once before is that they are showing you ways that you can dissect that die and use the component pieces in different ways now i know that as crafters we would think of this most often but you, they may come up with something in these charts that we wouldn't necessarily think of doing. So I like the fact that they have those in here. Of course, they, they have to take the opportunity to tell us about other dies currently in their collection. Um, I will tell you that the prizes and giveaways they talk about in here are dated. So those are not going to still be valid. Um, these magazines are highly collectible. And they, you know, we keep them on the shelf sometimes for years after the publishing date. So not all of the, not all of the, um, uh, the giveaways and contests and that kind of thing are going to be valid in them. Probably only the most recent issues would have that. But then you'll, when you flip back in your magazine, you'll find that they have how many papers were originally in here? Sixteen papers in your magazine, and these are two-sided papers. Um, mine are all torn up because I used a bunch of them in my cards. Ruthann and... asks a question about the papers. Ruthann, let's see. Anyone know why the paper in the magazine smells chemically and how to get rid of it? Um, I didn't notice that, to tell you the truth. Here's <coughs> Just a little bit, I guess. Mine doesn't smell particularly, though, I don't think. I have to tell you, I don't have a real strong sense of smell because I made soap for so many years and using those those really strong scents. So I think I kind of burned up some of my some of my my senses. I don't. <laughs> um. Uh, th this one doesn't smell particularly chemically. I think what I would do, though, um, Ruthann, is just to... Um, it, sometimes these, these things are printed, and then they go right into the slip covers, and I think that kind of holds in the... the um, sometimes I think that's, that holds in the ink smells and stuff because they just don't get to breathe enough before they get packaged. So I think leaving it out and just letting it breathe would probably help as much as anything. Um, that that would be my suggestion. If anybody else has a suggestion, that would be 
good if we could share that with Ruthann as well, but that would be my suggestion is just leave those papers out and let them breathe a bit. Um, they are beautiful. They are, and they are a very nice weight. This is not just glossy magazine paper. This is probably a, I'm going to say 120 pound paper, which is, or 120 GSM, not pound, 120 GSM, which is significantly heavier than a magazine sheet and significantly heavier than typing paper, but not as heavy as cardstock. Um, yeah, Annette says she tore hers out of the magazine and let them sit out on the table for a while. I do think just letting them breathe is probably going to be your best option. Anyway, it comes with a bunch of beautiful double-sided papers, which I'm going to find very useful for other projects, too. Look at those beautiful holly papers. I think those are gorgeous. And you have a holly and two-sided print and musical notes. I always find that useful for my Christmas cards. I love using music on my cards. So... Anyway, we get all these beautiful papers, and then you just get all these fun ideas. They give you some ideas for templates and things in the back here. So it's a great magazine, and you get the die, and you get the papers. But in addition to that, you get our kit. Let's take a look at what we sent you. I sealed mine all up, so it's all nice and safe from me. <laughs> Let's see. You got to be smarter than the plastic wrap. Um, okay. In the magas or in the kit that I sent you, you have our ribbon for our three cards. You have a couple of pages from the download because I wanted to make more they only gave us in our kit or in our pages um, I think just one of the of the printed papers and we're going to make more cards than that so you have some papers you have this beautiful piece of onyx shimmer paper. We now, or glimmer paper, we now call it shimmer and we have this in lots of colors. But we're using one of those. We are, you, um, you've got some background papers that I printed off my computer. I gave myself the misprint because it seemed like a waste not to use it. Um, you have this beautiful aqua colored cardstock we're going to use. You have this one called cotton. I think this is cotton candy. cotton candy. This was called cotton candy, and it's from um, Nouveau or um, Craft Perfect is the name of that company. You have some more flowers. So we've got some nice things, some nice extras to use. Um, we've got our card blanks. We're using three six by six cards today. So I'm going to keep those out. One more thing I wanted to show you before we get started here is I printed an extra set of the downloads just so you guys could see on, let's see, what page was it of your magazine? On like the second or third page in right here. It's on page five of your magazine. There are instructions to going to tatteredlace.com, going to downloads, and you can get, you can download a set, a PDF file that's got all of these papers in it, and that doesn't cost you anything because you bought the magazine. So you can get all of these papers just for the cost, your cost of printing. Lots of different colors. And you can tell that I printed one of your papers out of there. Kim asks if you sell the other dyes that are shown in this magazine. Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, you won't always find all of the dyes there because tattered lace dyes are 
tend to, as we know, they tend to be kind of expensive. So I don't try to offer everything that Tattered Lace has. If there's a die you see in this or one of the magazines that you particularly want, let me know you're looking for that and I will look and see if I can, if I can get it. I can't always get them, but sometimes I can. So I can certainly go on the wholesale website for Tattered Lace and see what I can find for you. But look at all these papers, and you can get all these just for the, your cost of ink. And I've talked before about HP print. No, I don't work for Hewlett Packard, and I'm not really advertising for them, other than to say that they do have a really nice program available for those of us who like to print our own papers. You can, If you buy an HP eligible printer, you can set up a program with Hewlett Packard where you pay a small monthly fee. I think I pay $4.99 a month, $4.99. And that allows me to, sorry, at the door. Uh, that allows me to be able to print 100 pages a month and they send me my ink for free because we all know the most expensive part of printing is the ink. And your printer, when I say an HP eligible printer, your printer actually talks to HP and tells them when your ink cartridges are getting low and what your total number of pages are. If you go over your allotment of pages, then they charge you a higher fee just for that month. And then it goes back to your regular subscription price. So it's a really cool program. If you don't have that and you find yourself in the market for a new printer, think about that one because... There's beautiful downloads available from Tattered Lace and from Hunky Dory and a number of other companies. Those are inkjet. It's an inkjet printer. But they are really beautiful. And yes, Mary, you're right. The Tattered Lace dies are more expensive, but they are very heavy duty. You are not going to break or bend them, as you said. And they have some really special features like for one thing, their cutting surfaces tend to be deep so that you, you know, it cuts really well and they are nonstick coated. So your stuff just pops out of them, which if you've ever struggled to get your die cut to release from a die, you will know is just a super valuable <laughs> aspect of these dies that the, the non-stick coating is just fabulous. So I am a strong proponent of tattered lace. That's why we have over 600. Right now we have over 600 tattered lace dies in our store. Um, to see the selection, if you're interested when we're done here, just go to, um, go to our website, go down the left-hand column till you see die cutting, select tattered lace, and you can pull right off of, um, you know, you just click on Tattered Lace and the whole selection of Tattered Lace dies will come up. Uh, yes, it, Tattered Lace dies work beautifully on vellum. They work on almost any kind of paper. Use watercolor pencils and shade over the paper for some really cool prints too. I'm sure, I'm sure that would be spectacular with a die like this one. Excellent suggestion. So let's get going here and do some die cutting. Shall we? Let's start with, let's start with the, maybe the blue one. Let's see if we got the blue one here. Here's our blue. Let's start with our blue one. I'm going to pull my die cutter down into view here. I hope I got a really good camera view. I tried to get the camera really close today so that when we're doing the snipping on these you can see what I'm doing. And just FYI, the die cutter I'm using today is a cut and go pro machine. It's by um it it's the brand name is um, Ultimate Crafts. Um it's actually manufactured by Art Deco. I think it's called Deco Creations or something, but it's Ultimate Crafts is what we know it is. I'm going to cut my prints apart just because it makes them a little easier to handle. Oh, 
And my machine will take a six inch die. So I'm gonna put it down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my die over the top. And you will see when you do this that the, the border of your die is significantly wider than the die itself. That's just kind of a guide to placement. Kind of center that over that outline, like so. Can you see that well, guys? I get it over there under my picture, and then you can't see it. There you go. There we go. Sorry, it's kind of hard to figure out. I have to move opposite what I expect to do to show you. So I'm going to put this down. I'm going to grab my purple tape. And I'm going to put a little piece on here just to hold, maybe a couple pieces, just to hold my die in place while it's being cut. And I think you'll see just how easily these will cut. I'm going to put this through. I'm not going to shim it the first time through. Let's take a look at how how it does without a shim. And if necessary, I'll add one. I usually, this is a very highly detailed die. So I usually go back and forth a couple of times. Uh, they used to be made in the US, Mary, a couple years ago, these dies that they moved production to China. I know. Not what we necessarily want to hear, but they, the original tattered lace dies were all made in the U.S. It does look like this is going to require a shim. I need to reach around here and get myself a piece of paper to put in here. This is a really thin paper, so I'm going to add two sheets. It's not particularly thin paper, but it's not thick either. So I'm going to put it back in with the shim. But it is true that the older tattered lace dies, many of the ones in our collectible magazines that we have in the store, were actually manufactured in the U.S., which was kind of funny, because when I would have to um, deal with the um, with the uh, import duties, <laughs> it was weird because I was paying import taxes on things manufactured in the U.S because they were made here, exported to Europe, and then sent back here, <laughs> which was kind of weird. Okay, now we got a beautiful die cut on that. So I'm gonna pop that loose from my tape, which of course I can use that tape over and over again. And let's see how our, how our image came out. Beautiful. It will have just a few little pieces to pop out, but generally they're pretty good. <laughs> and a lot of what you have to pop out of a really good die cut like this could be just flicked out with your finger, just like I just did. Okay, so we've got one done. Let's do our other three so we can do our layering. So I'm going to grab another one of my... and line it up just like I did before with a nice border all the way around it. If I got the border all the way around it, chances are I've got it centered really nicely. I do love the fact that these are easy to line up to. Not all dies are. These are very it looks easy. Dimensional. Excuse me? It says it looks dimensional. Yes, it does. Okay. I'm gonna run this through again. The, the, I will say, Mary, that when they moved to China, they did a good, they made a good selection of manufacturers because I haven't really seen a significant change in the quality of the dyes since they moved. So that's good news. Okay. Well, 
off our tape off of number two. And pop that out. Once again, we'll give it a little flick or two. Look at that. <laughs> it's just kind of almost self-cleaning which if you've spent hours and hours cleaning out some of the really intricate dyes, you will appreciate the value of being able to do that. I do have a few little pieces in my die at this point, so I'm just going to poke those out so that my holes will still cut nicely. I'm going to get my next one, cut this apart. Pop it on here and line it up. This is just a beautiful bouquet. I really, really love it. Ruben was mesmerized and she almost burnt the soup. Oh, <laughs> don't burn the soup. <laughs> well, I think I love as much as crafting as food. <laughs> And Teddy and Bryce, of course, and Lauren, <laughs> and Jordan. <laughs> I better get them in there. <laughs> All right. We know better. <laughs> don't know why I don't have a mat under my machine, so I'm not sliding my machine all over. This one isn't too bad because it's not difficult to turn the handle up, but I do have a little mat that I put under my machine that keeps it from moving and it makes my life a little easier when I'm die cutting. Okay. Okay, there's three. One more. Line that up nicely. Make sure I get a good border all the way around it. Pop it back in the machine. And we'll get number four done. One of the things I appreciate about my tattered lace dies too is that um, they make some really good card shapes and stuff. They're an investment, but the nice thing is once you've invested in them, because their dies really don't wear out, you can make cards forever and forever off of those off of those die sets and. Boy, the bigger sets, well, again, it's an investment. You know, you might spend 60 to $70 on a set of dies. It's not uncommon for them to have 20, 25 dies in a set that you can use for all different kinds of purposes. So once you get over the initial sticker shock <laughs> of what a set of dies costs, when you look at the total value added, it's pretty remarkable what you can get in some of those die sets for the price of the set. Let's pull that out of there. I have noticed that because of the nonstick coating in these dies, it is less likely that I will tear it pulling. You know, even for an intricate image like this, it's way less likely that I will pull it get or uh, tear it getting it pulled out of the die mary says she has one of the tattered lace easel 
card dies she bought from you and just loves it. Oh, good. Oh, I love that easel card. Is that the one with the big square lace panel? And then the smaller lace panel? And the ornate easel, maybe? That's one that I've used quite a few times in classes. Oh, I love that thing. We did really good by when we did those ornate easel classes, too. Okay, let's move our die cutter out of the way for a little while. Store my tape on my handle. <laughs> Looks tacky, but I know where my tape is. I'll keep my shin plates and my die all together, so maybe I won't lose those. <laughs> you guys know me well enough to know I lose just about everything. Okay, there's no particular top or bottom design to these. We'll start by just looking to see what still needs to be cleaned out. This one has very little that needs to come out of it. You can flip it over backwards and you'll see a lot of cut lines. That doesn't mean there's a lot that hasn't come out of there. A lot of this is dimensional cuts. So there are three little openings in the stems. Pull those out. And then there's just a couple of other ones. You're only looking for the ones that are, are cut all the way around. But like I said, when we were flicking it earlier, we took most of the pieces out. That one's ready. And this one got most of them out. I'm finding that most of the pieces that I want to remove are actually in the stems. They're really tiny little pieces between the stems. Now this one, two out of the three of the stem pieces came out, but I want to take that third one out. And that one looks good now. But look at the beautiful cutting on that. I mean, we didn't spend a lot of time lining that up. You saw what we just did. We just lined up with the, with the color border and made sure that our border was about the same all the way around. And yet, our die cutting is just really precise right on the color. This one, I see one little spot here to take out. And that's uh, is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, there was one there. Okay, and our last one. Just not a lot of extra weeding to do here. If you're having a lot of weeding to do, consider shimming your die because these should cut through. And if you're flicking the dies like we just did, these should pretty much, most of it just pop out. So that looks good. I think we'll make this last one here, our base layer. I'm not going to promise this isn't a messy proposition because you've got all these little die cutting pieces. <laughs> but like I said before, you've heard it before from me, the most wonderful crafting is the crafting that's messy. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to have to decide what we want for our layers. I always find this just a little bit painful to cut off the extras when everything's beautiful. But what we want to do here is we're going to cut a few pieces off in the beginning and then we're going to cut progressively more off of it so we have less and less pieces as we build up like you would do with what like you would expect to see with paper tool. So for example, I'm going to clip this little ribbon out and take that off. I'm going to take the tag off. I'm actually going to cut off, I think, I think I'll, I will only have one layer of stems. Now this is a matter where you have choice here, guys. You can do this differently than I'm doing it. I'm using my little hobby journal scissors. If you guys bought the Dot and Do kit from us way back in the day when we did the Dot and Do kit, you will have a pair of these. If you don't, they run about somewhere in the area of $3 in our store. It's less than four anyway. They're quite a good value. Now what I'd like to do is I want to take a little bit off all the way around so that the dimensionality shows right away. 
And I'm going to take off just a couple of these little buds initially. Maybe that one. Um, I'm going to take out this one right over the white flower. I'll pop that one off. And let's see. I think I'll wait until next time to take that one out. I think I'll take this a little bit larger flower right here over the white one on the left hand side off and I think that's about enough for a first layer so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to put some foam squares on here did we not have foam squares in this kit uh, maybe you just didn't give me some they, they got them in there so right okay good all right so I'm going to take some foam squares here I think you guys should have gotten a whole sheet of foam squares in this kit if I'm not mistaken because we use a lot of them in this kit. I actually see a couple little openings to open up here. Now that I'm getting in a little bit closer on this, I'm going to take my pokey tool and take a couple more little pieces out. Don't be afraid to put plenty of foam squares on. The foam squares are small enough that you can easily fit them in and around these areas. So I do see a couple little things I want to take out. I had, what did I see? I saw one here. Yeah, isn't that a, yeah, that's a poke out. And there's a little tiny one up there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I thought I saw one more right here. There's one. Okay, so this is what I have left at this point. Still most of the flowers at this point just took off my stems and a few select pieces. I'm going to peel my little stickers here. My foam squares. And I'm going to position this layer right over my last layer. <laughs> I may have to commit. I may have a hard time committing dye surgery. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> it is a really pretty image and it is hard to cut up, but the end results are going to be beautiful enough. You guys won't really mind having committed dye surgery. I'm going to line this right up over my last image. I'm going to get right over here and see that I'm getting a good layer. And look at the dimensionality we add after just one layer. Now let's get another one out. We're going to clip all the things we clipped before plus some. So I'm going to take that tag off again. This time I think I will take, I'm going to go a little higher on my stems. So I'm going to take my stems out mostly. And again, there's no precise science to this. I'm just kind of giving you ideas about what to cut out. Don't feel like you have to do yours just like mine. You may not like something I do, and that's okay. You can do it differently. Okay, I'm going to take out, in addition to the ones I've already taken out, I'm going to take out this lower flower on the far right. It's a little bit lighter color, and it's clearly behind the other blossoms. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to come up here. And I already took out those two. I took these out before. So I need to take those off again. Or it did little good to take them off the first time. I'm going to take off this one because we took it off last time i'm going to cut off what else do i want to cut off boy nothing i don't want to cut off anything but i'm going to cut off um oh just for the heck of it let's do something unusual i'm going to cut this one right out of the middle i'm going to take 
this one out. Now, because I've started taking out some of my bigger flowers, I think we'll go ahead and texturize this one just a little because some of the flowers, some of these flowers will show where the others behind them won't show as much. So I'm going to bring my mat in. <laughs> mat is a very um, generic term in this case, isn't it? I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to get this rolly tool, this ball tool out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to gently roll around the back of that a little bit. And as I do that, you see how it starts to kind of create a, a little bit of a concave area there? That's all I'm really wanting at this point is just to use, they've already put cut lines in here. So what I'm doing is kind of capitalizing on those cutting lines that they've put in this to create a bit of a rounded finish from the front. See how that kind of creates this little rounded area. And I'm going to come in here and in here. So I'm just kind of coming into the center of each of these roses and I'm creating a little well from the back. I'm not trying to crease them or anything. Now what I'll do from the front is kind of push back between the flowers and let those come forward if that makes some sense. So then kind of pushing the foliage back a little bit and again kind of capitalizing on I'm just going to bend just a little between those two flowers and I'm going to let that that texturizing we've done on the back show a little bit by bringing the flowers forward so this is what I will end up with. It's not, it's very subtle, but beautiful. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put some foam squares in here. I'm going to put them right into the centers of those areas where I've texturized that from the back. <laughs> every once in a while too, Ruth, Ruth Ann, we every once in a while we offer a really good discount on our tattered lace. So our prices are good to begin with considering that we've already um, paid the postage from UK which can be considerable and that we have um, already paid the duty taxes and those kinds of things which you guys don't have to worry about too much because your purchases would be smaller but I've paid duty on them and you because they're in the US you can get them faster but our prices are already fair and, and reasonable and then every once in a while I offer just incredible deals so if you're not already a newsletter subscriber be sure that you subscribe to our newsletter so that you'll know when we're doing one of those sales because newsletter subscribers are the only ones who get it and you'll get sale discount codes and things to know that there's a big sale on. So do that. And where do they sign up for your newsletter? There is a newsletter sign up right in the description to this video underneath here. So you can go after class and just pop in there and sign up for the newsletter. Do they get a confirmation that they've signed up, or does it? You just should. Show? I believe you she get a confirmation. She get her confirmation. You didn't yet. get a confirmation. Um, have you gotten any of the newsletters yet? Because if you haven't, I will look that up for you, and we can check it out and see what's going on. Have you gotten any of the actual newsletters, Roseanne? Now, look what's happening. Just, just texturizing that just a little bit like we just did. We're getting some additional layers there. Can you see that? Okay. 
you go resubmit and if uh, you will have you should have a newsletter tomorrow morning sometimes it's late when I get them done you should have a newsletter tomorrow morning covering this video and the video that I did on Thursday it has links to any products we talked about and if it's not there tomorrow morning then email me which you I believe there's also an email link isn't there there's at least a store link in the description below and that will um, you can contact me through the store and if you haven't gotten that or I can just tell you it's info at simplyspecialcrafts.com that's probably the easiest way you can always email me and I will certainly check that out for you so I'm cutting all the greenery pretty much all the greenery off the bottom the only exception to cutting all the greenery off the bottom is see this one little stem that comes out here I'm going to keep this one rose with the stem because I found in one of my others that it looked kind of bare in the center if I don't keep one little piece down there so I decided that I like to keep this one small rose on the bottom and its leaves in place so I'm taking all this out now I'm gonna to have to get really ruthless here on this final layer and one of the things I'll have to kind of ask myself is what's the most in the foreground of what I have I'm going to take this flower out there's one that has a little patch of gray in it I'm going to take this flower that's got the little patch of gray in it because it's clearly behind this blossom in the front so I'm going to take that one off I think I will take let's see yeah I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that attached I think I'm gonna keep this this one and this one in the front I think I'll take this larger one off the bottom because it's clearly behind Okay, we'll do. Um, I didn't do my Thursday newsletter yet. I had Brittany here and we got into a bunch of projects and so I got behind on my newsletters. I was planning to do it yesterday and I ended up cleaning in here instead. But I'm so glad because my shop feels so much better. <laughs> And then we did a lot of planning for what we're going to do between now and the end of the year because it occurs to me that the calendar is getting away from me. So let's see, we took this piece out last time, so I pretty much need to take that out. Um, I think I'll leave the leaf there so that my pieces are all still connected. There, like I said, there's no real science to this, guys. So what you may be experiencing, Thelma, is just that I haven't sent a newsletter for a few days. But it's possible, too, that something has happened, and we'll certainly look it up. Okay, this is what I'm keeping. It's only a small representation of the total flowers. But it's enough, since we texturized our last level, to add some more texture to this one. So we're going to flip this one over. And I'm going to roll around in the back of there just a little bit. I'm going to kind of create that little concave in there again to add some dimension to my flower. Because Tattered Lace has already snipped these, you know, when they cut it, they cut little channels in that flower that allow this paper to move and allow us to texturize this. You don't see that in a lot of flowers and a lot of lesser price dyes. It's just one solid piece. But in this one, they've actually created little cut marks in there 
that allow these things to move and allow us to get that texture in there and retain that texture because of the way that they've cut it. That's another way you can tell that you've got a really good quality die when they are putting the extra money into, into creating those things that allow you to be able to do extra special stuff. Now, I have obviously I have a very curvy piece, <laughs> but I'm just going to come back to the front and I'm going to bend those flowers back out again, moving the foliage and the stems to the background, moving my flowers to the foreground. In the midst of doing this, I'm kind of um, leveling this out again. I'll show you what I mean by leveling it out. And when I get done here, my piece is going to be more flat than it was. My flowers are concave, but my piece is more flat and it's ready to put down. So I'm going to put my I'm going to put my foam squares right in the middle of those concaves that we just created. <laughs> what weight paper would you suggest for printing the downloads? Um, can you grab one of those packs of paper over there, honey, and I'll show them what I'm using. There's a couple different kinds I use. I tend to like, um, yeah, let's see. Oh, the, yeah, this is a really good paper. You can actually, I can get this for you if you want this brand. This is one that I use. It's from Paper Accents, Peterson Arn. It's a 111 pound paper, which is 199 GSM. Um, it still it makes it still lighter weight than the um, Hunky Dory brand, and it will still feed nicely through the printer. But this is um, this is really really good paper. There's also one I've gotten on Amazon. It's a cardstock. It's in a yellow package, and I'm not sure I have one over there. That's all you had. Uh huh. That's all you had over there. Okay. Well, I can get you. I can get you the Peterson Arn paper if you want that. And then there's one that I buy. It's in a very bright yellow package. It's bright white paper, and I buy it on Amazon. And I can't think of the name right now, but um, if I can locate that fairly easily. I'll put the name of it in the newsletter for you too. But I use a light, lightweight, not not super heavy, but a lightweight cardstock to print these things on. I like the I like the weight of having cardstock material, not regular printer paper. Regular printer paper is just too light. It doesn't have enough texture um, to hold up to some of what we're doing here to this paper. If you um, have the the kit in hand, you can feel the weight of the paper that we sent you. That's what you're shooting for, is kind of a, a lightweight cardstock. Um, just so, just for comparison, typical cardstock out of the package is, that you buy at you know, almost any craft store is going to be 60 to 80 pound. This is a 110 pound card, so it's still uh, it's still fairly weighty, but it's a lot less weighty than the hunky dory card we're used to. I've tried running Adorable Scorable, and it doesn't want to run through my printer, any of my printers, very well. It gets jammed in there because it's just too heavy to go through the printer. Adorable Scorable wouldn't be your best choice anyway because the film on it is going to resist the ink. Um, Mattastic is a little lighter, but it's still going to be, um, I'm afraid, a little heavy for... Oops, you know what? This one leaf I left in the middle was cut out of the last layer, so I'm going to take this off, which is actually going to make this two pieces. Now that I'm done with my other jobs, I don't care that it's two pieces. And now I'll line these up on here. 
And you can experiment cutting this out in different ways and see what you think. But now we have that all completed. Let's get a card ready to put that on. And this, oh, all these pretty pieces, I put them in the trash because I did with them. <laughs> okay, let's get the rest of our card going here. We need one of our six by six card blanks, which I've put somewhere convenient, I'm sure. <laughs> I know I'm gonna need this one. There it is. And I know I need one out of my magazine. polka dots and the blue kind of gray blue out of my magazine I may not have it here I may have to take it out of because I've used part of my paper I may have to make some little changes in what I use depending this one will work that one will work that's purplish but that may be my best choice that I have for what I have available since I have used up a lot of my paper from the magazine already. Okay, so I have a six by six card blank. I'm gonna use the white layer on my card as one of my card layers. So I'm gonna cut this piece of blue. I'm gonna cut myself a five. I think we'll just go straight to five and a half. I think that's going to be a good, good size. I'm going to go to five and a half by five and a half. And that's a nice size card layer for my first layer. See that? That's just about the right, just about the right border there. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down. Uh, Nina, that's a good one. That that tends to be really good paper. That is that the is that the yellow package, Maria? It might be the one that I was using. Although I I do know that Nina makes good paper. I'm sure everybody kind of has favorites and some of you may have some others of you may have good ones to share too. Our dream of paper is 111. Okay, I think I ordered it on, on the paper website. I don't remember the name. Okay. Okay. I've got that one down. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to cut, first I'm going to cut my borders off so I don't mismeasure. Well, I'm going to cut my white borders off this paper so I'm truly measuring and cutting printed portion of the paper. And for those of you who are using the paper out of the magazine, it's kind of the blue-gray one that I used. So I'm using purple this time because that's what I have. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful, by the way, because this, these flowers have a tint of purple in them. And besides that, purple's beautiful most any time, isn't it? Because <laughs> purple's my favorite, you know. <laughs> okay. All right, 
let's see, we went to five and a half last time. I'm going to go to five and a quarter and check it. And then we'll go from there. Okay, leave me enough left. Yes, it is. Just for that one. We'll go to five and a quarter. That was, oh, that was six and a quarter I just did. It's no wonder it looked like I was getting over there ways. Okay. Let's try that again. And really do five and a quarter. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be just right. So I've got that layer. Now I want my polka dots. And if that layer was five and a quarter, my polka dots are going to be five. So I'm going to go to five. This has lots of layers on it, doesn't it? <laughs> and Those are pretty. Purple is the symbol of royalty. Oh, yeah? Well, there we go. There we go. I must have royal blood. <laughs> <laughs> Bow, servant. <laughs> He's rolling his eyes at me again, guys. Okay. There we go. That's going to be nice. Okay, so... Oh, wait. I was supposed to put the green down before I did the polka dots, so this is going to be smaller. What was this one? I did five on that one. Let me do five on this one. Maybe just... I'm going to do like five and a quarter... And then I'll cut it more if necessary. Yeah, that's too big. So it's going to have to go to five. And then I'll make my next one smaller. There, that looks good. And then this one's going to have to be a little bit smaller. Which is fine because we're working down to the size of our bouquet. Our bouquet is still going to be, let's see, four and three quarters. And four and three quarters. That looks pretty good. What am I doing here? I'm doing something crazy. I'm doing something crazy. This should have been, it doesn't matter. I can do this however I want. I just did this differently than I did the last one. And, well, that happens. See what I did? I just cut this piece smaller. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make this my third layer. And see how I gapped this? I like that, actually. So I'm going to take this piece right here that I've already cut to that size. I'm going to cut an eighth of an inch off of it so I can create that little gap. Oh, and I'm doing it right under my picture so you can't see it. Let me do this again. <laughs> Come over here. See the little gap here? I like that. I just like the fact that that's unexpected. I'm going to use this one as the polka dotted layer, and then I'm going to put my next layer on with the polka dots. Is that okay with you guys? Did I just change this up? <laughs> So I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off of this, and then I'm going to cut this strip to like an inch and a half wide, and I'm going to layer it like this. Because we can change this. We can change this design any way we want to, can't we? And then I'm going to put a solid on top of that and that'll work and then I still have a small piece of this to go on top can't believe I did that but you know you get into working through the process and things sometimes have to change up a little and this one's going to be, what was our last one? Our last one was four and three quarters. I'm going to make this one four and a half, just to check it. 
It is four and a half. I think this is going to be fine. So that's what it's going to look like. Mine's most definitely more purple than it was last time. Let me show you again my original sample in case you guys want to do your polka dots differently than I just did. Am I high enough? There we go. In case you want to do your polka dots differently, i got to come this way. There we go. No? Come on. <laughs> it's hard to figure out where I have to be to be in the right place on the camera, guys. Okay, so we had our white border, then we had that kind of aqua border, then I had the gray, then I did the polka dots, and there's only, actually only one layer of the polka dots on this one, and I had the polka dots, um, I had probably an inch, and then maybe a three inch piece, and then another inch, and then I had the aqua, and then I had the gray again. That's how I did that one. This one I'm doing now is going to be different. It's still going to be beautiful, but I want you to be able to use this with your design if you want to do that. It's completely up to you what you do, but this is going to work out fine. We don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. Bryce taught me that. All my life, I have been such a type A personality, it's ridiculous. And I married the ultimate type B personality in Bryce. And so my natural tendency is to be very reactive about things. And Bryce, he just kicks back and listens and sometimes laughs and then says, you know, it does it really matter? In the long run, is the earth going to stop? <laughs> if that doesn't go just the way you want it. And I've realized over time that his philosophy is very, very good. It, I'm going to cut one more slice off of this one, another eighth inch and another slice, because I want uh, that border at the top and at the bottom. So I'm taking an eighth inch off. I'm going to make this an inch and a half wide again. So this one's going to be very different, but it's still going to be beautiful. But I've realized his philosophies are pretty good in that venue. I've been good for him because sometimes he needs a little extra motivation and he's been good for me because I don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. So I think we were meant to be, honey. Mary says it looks like your samples have some glitter on them. They do, I put stickles on them. Um, and I recommend doing that. I did not include stickles in your kit because I was trying to keep the cost of your kit under control and a lot of you guys have stickles. But if you don't have stickles, just use your clear iridescent glitter, which I know most of you have, and, um, and your glue bottle. be pretty hard to do this one with your quickie glue pen, or I normally would recommend that. But just use your glue bottle and your clear iridescent glitter. And yes, I absolutely recommend putting some glitter on here because it really, really sets them off then. But the stickles worked great if you have that. And I'm going to put some on mine again. In fact, I have a stickles glue bottle sitting right here. If you don't have stickles, you will have in a week or so if you decide to go with our upcoming kits because I've actually included a bottle of stickles in the Hortensia kit if you guys decide to participate with us in that for next weekend wait till you see those I think some of you have seen them but I'm really really excited about Hortensia not only because there's a lot of purple in it and there it is <laughs> I love hydrangeas, and they're beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, Marilyn, I saw your emails, and I will absolutely check that out for you. Well, one thing you guys may be noticing, though, is just that I'm a little behind in newsletters, so it's possible you've been getting all of them, and it may be just that I'm behind. Yeah, you're not two weeks behind. I'm not two weeks behind, though. That is true. I've been sending them out. We've had What's New Wednesday, 
and we've had that was the last one I've had and then before that we had um, the ones from last weekend so yes there have been a few okay again my design is going to be just a little bit different here this time it's all okay guys it's all okay but whatever we end up doing is going to be beautiful Now in this last la last layer, I'm going to want to wrap my bow around it. So before we put this last layer of cardstock down, we're going to put our bow around the corner so we don't have to wait for best glue ever to dry. It's a nice solution, but you don't always have to use it. So I'm going to get my blue ribbon out here. Whatever we do is going to be pretty. Let's see. And there's my packet with my materials in it. I want this, this bow to be um, rather dainty. So it's going to be small bow, but I also want the color to be rather intense. So uh, for this organza, so I'm actually going to tie a double, but I'm going to tie it fairly small. So I'm getting my embellishment attic bow maker out here. And I'm going to put my piece through like I always do. And let's try, let's see, let's try this at a, well, do I want as big as a one? Let me see. Is a five going to be big enough? I think I want a one. I'm going to tie it just at a one. And I'm going to run it twice, but I'm not going to spread the, the layers of my bow out. I just want the color to be a little bit more intense. So I'm going to tie a double. No one dies as the laundry piles up. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. That's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about, Annette. It just, in the greater scheme of things, it really just doesn't matter. You know? <laughs> He's been very good for me, my hubby. He's been very good for me. It was kind of good to have the personality that I have when I was in my business career. You know, you got to kind of drive projects along and, you know, keep things moving. And having that sense of urgency about everything was probably beneficial to me and the corporate world. But in my world now, it really is not something I have to about it just want to check my bow and see if it's going to be the right size and I think it's going to be a perfect size don't you so we're going to go ahead and put some tape on the back of that do you see how easy that bow is to tie beautiful 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 ha <laughs> So you told James he couldn't do the dishes anymore. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I just... <laughs> and that was saying that when she was really sick, James was trying to help her. But he put Dawn dishwashing liquid in the dishwasher. That did not work very well. Needs more practice so he knows which one to use. Oh, yeah. See, there, Bryce's philosophy was he just needed more practice. <laughs> and his response was, wait, it said it was dishwashing liquid. <laughs> Teddy's here visiting. He's up in Bryce's lap getting some serious loves over there. <sighs> So I got to give you the uh, the latest on the on the wildlife situation here. I think I told you that um, 
Well, you know that we that we built Bryce's dad a catio, and his cats are loving being out there. He's still a worry wart. They're absolutely safe. They're fenced in. They're safe from all kinds of predators. His cats are loving, just loving the um, outdoors. The outdoors. I was just reading, so I stopped talking. They're loving the outdoors. He's still worried they have to come in at night, which is funny, because they're absolutely safe and they got a gap door right into the bedroom, but he still worries, and that's okay. They're his kitties, his babies. So you saw what I did there. I just tied my bow. I put a piece of tape across the back of it. I peeled my tape. I wrapped it around and I let the tape adhere to the back of the card. That's all that's going to need to just hold on nicely. Um, and uh, for Bob's birthday, we got him a squirrel feeder to be outside the catio to keep the squirrels or keep the kitties interested and, you know, feed the wildlife, but we mostly got it so that we could watch the you know the kitties would have something to watch out there well bob really really enjoyed the squirrel feeder and they went to the to the um backyard bird store to get some squirrel feed and bob decided he wanted a second feeder and laura not to be outdone decided that she was going to buy one of those corn feeders for the squirrels that have the four prongs and then the thing spins with the corn cobs on it, it's a, a remarkable gadget. I was sure the squirrels were going to kill themselves, but it hasn't taken long at all to figure out how to get all, get to all four corn cobs. Anyway, uh, between the three squirrel feeders we now have on our porch, we have so many squirrels you wouldn't believe it. They feed. They fill both Bob. Bob fills the dispensers, and he fills all three dispensers every day. And I've counted as many as seven squirrels on the deck at one time. I was I sent a picture to Bryce's sister, Paula, and I said, how many squirrels can you count? She wrote back and said, good grief, that's not a, that's not a hobby, that's an infestation. <laughs> Because she could see six squirrels in her picture. I said, oh, one must have moved while I was taking the picture. Because there were seven. Seven squirrels at one time out there. <laughs> I'm just dotting along with my glue bottle now. Um, I don't want a massive amount of glue anywhere. But I want a little bit on all these little pieces. This glue bottle, if you don't have one. Wonderful. These little needle nip. That needle nose glue bottles are terrific. It's like what you get for quilling, but I have them way less expensively. Um, I'm going to set this just a little bit to the right since I have my bow up in the left hand corner and that will still be fine. And there's what we just created, guys. How beautiful is that? Now let's put little stickles on it. Get little stickles. <laughs> At least the squirrels can gather for a picnic. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. They definitely can. Now when I was glittering these, putting my stickles on, I focused on the center of the flowers. You know, sometimes it's hard to know exactly what part to glitter. And what I like to do is glitter the insides of the flowers just as a, as a focus of where to put my glitter. So if I were looking at the rose, the, you know, the inside face of the rose is where I put my glitter. And if I'm looking at them from the sides, I put a little bit at the top as if it, you know, that's the... That's where the glitter is, so let's see if you can see that on camera. I'm not sure you can, where I put that. Can you see that at all? Maybe go a little closer. Can you see where I put the glitter at all? A little. You can see it a little bit. It's going to be glittery and beautiful when you put yours on, though. 
and it really has a fabulous finishing touch to your card. And then the other thing that I did, and I think it looks really nice, is I put a nice, really fine line right over the stitching on the With Love tag. I put it right over the stitching. Just the stitching. So that my tag has a little extra shine to it too. I love it. I think it's beautiful. Now here's our two samples. One with, I think I like my original design better. Truly, I like the polka dots on this one better, but I do. I, I actually kind of like the purple behind the blue on the other one. So there we go. Very different, but, but pretty nonetheless. We'll set those aside. And it's time to make another one, huh? So what do we want to do next? We've got this one. And we've got this one. Maybe we should make the easel card because this one we're going to make identically. You know, let's talk about what's different here. What's different here is that, although the design of this one's much easier, I might be able to get the design right if I did this one. <laughs> this one I just tied almost a little bow tie in the, in the narrow purple. I love the way this looks. And then I kind of tucked it up under the flowers. I did run my ribbon around before I put this piece down, okay? And then this was just two layers in the back. But I shifted it and put it at a little bit of an angle just to give it an interesting twist. And I think it's beautiful that way. So if we have time, we'll make this one. But let's do... That's generous of you, Mary, that I'm just showing you an alternate version. I screwed up, okay, but at least it's a, it still turned out pretty. <laughs> I am going to tie my bow first for this one because this is going to need some best glue ever. And as we know, that takes a little while to dry. If you don't have best glue ever, go ahead and use a glue dot to hold this bow down. But if you don't have best glue ever, I really, really suggest that you invest in some of that. It is an absolutely terrific tool. This bottle will last you forever because it just, you only use the tiniest amount at a time. And it's fabulous for holding bows in place because it gets right into the fibers of the bow while it's wet. And then when it's dry, it dries into a glue dot. So the glue holds really well on the paper. It always, almost always holds well to the paper. It's the ribbon that it doesn't hold well to. But because it's in the fibers of the ribbon, that bow isn't going anywhere when you put it on with the best glue ever. So I just tied a 515. I start at five on my comb. I come back through five because whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. I'm coming down at one. I'm coming back up at one. Now I'm going to come back to five. And I'm going to go to five again. I'm going to come down through the hole. I'm going to shimmy everything up onto the tines of the comb. And then I'm going to bring this piece that's in the back through to the front between those, in that little gap in the teeth between the in the middle of the little tines. I'm going to tie just a single half knot in the back. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to hold one side firmly. Actually, I tend to do both sides at the same time now. What I do now, and this actually works really well for me. I don't know if it'll work as well for you, but this is what I do. I put these two index fingers right here behind it, hold it with my thumb, and I grab the rest of this with my hand, and I just kind of push back and pull this simultaneously, and that's holding all of my loops firmly in place. The other thing you can do if that strategy doesn't work for you is you can hold this firmly in one hand and pull then you grab this side and hold it firmly and pull. You just don't want to pull your loops out of place when you're tightening up the center of the bow. Does that make sense? If you haven't taken my bow class, take my bow class. It is a good one. I think everybody who's had it would agree that it is worth 
it is worth learning to tie beautiful bows in an easy way. And yes, like everything else, as Mary's saying there, it takes a little practice, but once you get it, it's yours. And there is nothing that enhances your card quite like having a really terrific bow on it. People will say, oh my gosh, how'd you do that? <coughs> okay, I had scissors, they're there. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to fold this into a taco. The open side's at the top. I'm going to clip upward and out to the end of my ribbon at an angle. And I'm going to get that beautiful whale tail on my bow. Some people call that a mermaid tail. I'm going to do the same thing here. I make my taco. It's open at the top. The fold is at the bottom. I clip upward at an angle towards the end of the ribbon, and I get that beautiful whale tail. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some best. Isn't that beautiful ribbon? Oh, it's so pretty. We have good ribbon in our store at great prices. Really do. It's hard to find ribbon at affordable prices that's good stuff to work with. And we have some of the best prices on some of the most beautiful ribbon that you're going to find. Because I work hard to make sure I find great stuff for you. Okay. I put a little dab on and then it kind of spread it out a little bit because it doesn't have to be thick to be effective. Oops, there I go again, holding it off camera. And I, it's just a little bit white there. See where the, where the glue is? I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to let that dry. Where I'm not going to throw something on top of it. It seems totally counterintuitive that you put your glue on and you let it dry. But that's the trick to getting the best glue ever to work well. I've only ever had one person in all the time that I have been doing this. Uh, these classes, I've only ever had one person complain about the best glue ever and say it wasn't everything I said it would be. And that person, I wrote back to her and said, are you letting it dry before you use it? And she said, no. I said, then it's not going to work. you got to let it dry. And then she wrote back again and said, it's perfect. <laughs> it works really well. Okie dokie. Glad to hear it. Yeah, let's see. What do I have to use here? I have my pink paper. We'll need that. We're letting the white part, the things that we have that are white here, that's just my basic card. I'm going to need a piece of background paper for that. I used the one in my kit, so I'm going to use this one, even though it's a little bit different. Your, this one is in your paper pack, and it's beautiful. So I'm going to use that, and then I need that. I still have a bit of that green paper left, so I'm going to get this out. Okay. So, my materials for my card are these, and then let's see, what do I have for a printed rose? I think yours is in your book. If not, it should be in the papers that we sent you. So, I just want to get the most pink one I have. I can use this one on top if I need to, but... I think there's one that's more pink here. That one's kind of salmon. It would still work, though. That looks all right. This one's purplish. That one's for the other card. Well, I guess... Let's see which one of these. They're the same. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> I'm use I think I'll use this one. <laughs> I really can't go wrong. They're all beautiful. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. We're going to cut these up into four pieces just to make them more manageable. And we're going to do a little more die cutting here, huh? So let's 
go at this. All right. I'm done with my magazine for now. I'm going to set these two pieces of paper right on top of them. In fact, all of these while I do my die cutting. Let's get my die cutter back in camera view here. We will pull my die cutter down. We will, I got my shims, I got my plates. I'm going to take my first flower. I'm going to position my die over the top with a nice border. All kind of off camera again, sorry. With a nice border all the way around it. Just make the border on the outside nice and even and you'll be right in the center of your print. I'm going to tape my die in place. I'm going to put my shims in. I'm going to... Somebody asked me the other day, why don't you use a metal shim plate? I have one for this machine. I'm not real sure where it is right now. <laughs> I like that your vet says he doesn't sell tractor tires. <laughs> You're funny, Mary, but I do appreciate it. I do very much appreciate the fact that you're purchasing from somebody who uses and understands what you do with the products. It's very frustrating to me to go into a store to buy something and have the people who are selling it to you not understand a thing about it. And there are some places that you can get absolutely spectacular prices on things, but if they don't know how to support them, it can be very frustrating after the sale. So I appreciate the fact that you're shopping with us. And as a small business, I very much appreciate your patronage. It ain't an easy time for small businesses, but you guys are making it much easier for us. So anyway. Thank you. And nope, I don't sell tractor tires. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, you're probably wondering why I did that. I don't know, force of habit. I didn't have to, because all I have to do is just pop it out of the die and flick it, and most of those will come right out. But go. Most of them came out right in the day. Okay, I'll flip it over. I will pop out these three on the stem that I know are always our more contrary ones. I have a couple right in the stems of the flowers that don't pop out quite as easily. I'll get rid of those. There was a little one up here on this flower. Which I get used to working these it becomes easier and easier to remember where the ones are that you have to pop out that one's done one down next okay let's see look at that that non-coat or that non-stick coating on here you just don't end up with a lot of stuff to have to clean out of your dye either. They are really good dyes, I have to say. Still probably my favorite brand in dyes. However, I also like it when you can get a good dye that doesn't cost as much as Tattered Lace. So we have some of those that I highly recommend too that we've worked with over time, you know what some of my favorites are. For example, the tattered or the um, find it trading dice are really good too.
Okay. All right, that looks good. Pop our tape off. I might actually have to get my second piece of tape here. <laughs> my purple tape lasts a long time because I use it and use it till it won't stick anymore. <laughs> That's interesting that it's sticking on the edge. Maybe I didn't have it all the way in, but that's fine. Because that will be a flower I trim off. Actually, it came out fine anyway. It just uh, didn't have it um, centered in my machine, I don't think. Okay, flick it. Right, get rid of the little pieces. We can decide what we want to do. And a couple little ones that don't usually pop out on their own. Out of there. That looks good. Number two is done. Don't do this with a cheap die, but you can get away with doing it with a tattered lace tie. You just bang it on the edge of the table and all the stuff falls out. I know, with the expensive die, you say, why would you do that? Because it's perfectly safe to do that when you have a die that's made of hardened steel. Like these are. Not necessarily a good strategy with a cheap die. <laughs> By contrast, if I get frustrated about something, it's hardly ever with store customers because our store customers are great. But what I do get frustrated with sometimes is, uh, um, you guys probably know that we have a store on Amazon too. And I get frustrated because Amazon customers are so used to people not knowing about their products that the customers will sometimes decide that the die is defective or not working right or it's not always a die it can be something else that something isn't working right because they need extra help with it and they don't know that they can ask for help so they'll either send it back or you know leave a negative review or something when i'm dying to help them but Amazon doesn't make it easy for me to do that because they don't let us talk to our customers. So if I have a frustration, it's that I want to help customers. And if the venue like Amazon doesn't make that possible, then I feel like customers sometimes get frustrated over things that are just unnecessary because I am more than willing to help you if you're having problems with the product, if you don't know how to work something, if you, you know, just need additional assistance, I figure that's my job, but in the Amazon world, they don't think the way we do. They're not used to their sellers kind of being experts in their product area, and they just don't let us talk to them. So because of that, I think we get frustrated, and so do our customers when we want to help. <laughs> so that's probably the greatest frustration in my life is that in my life as a seller of goods is that I want to be able to help. And when customers assume that there isn't help available, if the customer writes to me in Amazon, I can answer them, but I can't originate correspondence to help them with a the product. Not anymore. There was a time I could, but now they've kind of almost made that impossible. So, anyway, enough of that soapbox, huh? <laughs> okay. A few little pieces out of that one. That's looking pretty good. I have new stuff to show you after class today. 
I have two new things to show you. And then I also want to show you Hortensia from next weekend because that's going to be beautiful. I want to show you some of the bows I've been tying and we're going to um, get our Christmas bow making class on the schedule because we are ready if I could easily do it without disrupting the show I would turn around the camera and show you the table that we're working on is completely covered with rolls of ribbon because I just got my supplies of ribbon in and we're going to put together a really really nice ribbon set with the bow maker at a very very good price for what you're getting Stephanie for that bow class stuff. what stephanie has a question stephanie has a question um <laughs> let's see is turning your die cut side up will that help uh, help with what, Stephanie? I'm not sure I understand the question. If, if you're having trouble with getting a die to cut cleanly, then um, that's one of the things I recommend is turn your sandwich upside down. Um, it's surprising how some dies want to cut up and others want to cut down it's amazing how that can make a difference the other thing i say if you're having trouble getting a die to cut is to um is to move it to the edges of the machine you know take all your extra paper off and then move the die close to the edge of the machine because that's where the pressure is Shimming, of course, is another strategy for getting a stubborn die to cut. Um, <laughs> Oops, what am I doing? There we go. I gotta go get my glasses checked when I look across. I wear trifocals and sometimes you'll notice I'm lifting my head and putting my head down trying to get a good view of the screen across the table because I see really well here and I see really well out there but this just right across the table is sometimes hard for me to read so. Okay, hello everybody just popping in. Hi Diane! Welcome. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Okay. Let's go here and get this one cut. This is our last one. Do we have three already? One, two, three. Yeah. This is our last one and this one. Hi, Diane. How you doing, friend? <clears throat> yeah, there's lots of little things you can do to make a to make a stubborn die work. You will seldom have that problem with a tattered lace die because they have such a good cutting line to begin with that there are in fact dies that are difficult to use. I won't call out any specific brands here, but there are some that I am not as wild about as others. I try to carry the largest supplies of the dice I really think are good and good values. Like Tattered Lace, I carry a huge selection of them and one would say, well, wait, you really think that's a good value if you have to pay $30 for a die? Yes, because that die is going to last you forever. And it's just the best you can get. And I still believe tattered lace is the best you can get. But there are other dies that I consider to be great value dies that have good cutting lines, good cutting surfaces, 
and they last well for what you pay for them that I do recommend too. Okay. So we try to carry really good brands and the things we carry. I think we carry some of the best quality products that are out there. Brands I really like and believe in. Hunky Dory, of course. Love, love, love Hunky Dory products. Most of you do too. So we are on exactly the same page there. I like Tattered Lace. I like a lot of things by Couture Creations. Um, I like a lot of things from Find It Trading. I think Find It Trading tends to be just really good quality for what you pay for it. Um, there's a lot of good brands we have. And I must think there's a lot of good brands because we have like we're a small store, a small family run operation, but we still manage to have well over 10,000 products in stock every day, much to the dismay of my family who <laughs> catalogs, puts everything away, pulls everything, <laughs> lives with it. <laughs> Brittany saw this ribbon coming in for the ribbon class or for the bow making the, the um, Christmas wrapping bow making class. I'm not going to carry Christmas wrap guys because you can get great values on paper out there and paper is just too expensive. The long rolls of paper they're just too expensive to ship. So I'm not even going to try to carry Christmas wrap but I will supply you with some spectacular some spectacular ribbon at a really, really good price. Okay, we have all of our pieces cut. Let's construct our card first this time. Why? I don't know. Just because I feel like it. <laughs> so let's put our card together. Since I find them, we have, the, we have these three pieces of paper. Yours will look a little different than mine because I used my small chintz style print before oh that's what i'm looking for i just flipped right by it getting my card out <laughs> okay we are going to fold our card then we are going to take the top cover of our card and we're going to fold back to the fold line we're going to score it in. And we have just created an ESO card. Your top fold of your, your total card is 6x6, six six, which means that you have two 3-inch panels and one 6-inch panel. We are going to... I'm going to start my trimming this piece down so I can see what I'm doing when I'm measuring. And I'm going to put it on my trimmer straighter than that. Okay. So I'm going to trim my print edges off, which you'll have to do with your computer generated prints. going to cut myself my two outside panels first because I can adjust the inside panel as necessary. My card is six inches wide. I want to have, I'm just checking my card because as we know that's always a good idea. I just noticed that it's darker here. It's because that camera's not on or that light's not on today. Yeah, you can push the button over there. I oh, could. I don't know if it will do any good for their ability to no. see. It may or may not be plugged in. It may not be plugged in. Um, what was I saying? I'm going to cut my paper 
two, five, let's see, five and three quarters would leave me my whole paper. It's eight and a half inches wide. I'm going to go to, I'm going to leave a little more border since I'm using computer generated print to give myself more panel room. I'm going to go to five and a half and I'm going to make my border slightly wider because the paper I'm using is generated off the computer and it's going to have a little smaller print area than the one out of your magazine I had. So I'm just going to make my borders just a little bit wider. So I'm going to go to, do I want that to be as wide as that? I think that won't hurt. I'm going to do, I just got to make sure I'm going to like that. I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to do two and a half inch by five and a half inch panels for my card, leaving wide borders because that'll give me enough paper to do my whole thing, even though I had borders on my cardstock. So I'll have a little wider borders here. I'm gonna have two panels that have wider borders, and then I'm gonna have a five and a half by five and a half for the inside. Okay, so I'm going to glue these panels down here. <laughs> There's always something new. That is true. There's always something new. <laughs> I lay awake nights thinking of things to give you guys that are new and different so I can come on here and tell you what's the latest and greatest. <laughs> okay. Yes, there is always something new. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to put this one on here. Plus, again, I have pretty wide borders. I probably could have gotten a little narrower, but this is still going to be fine. It'll be a little wider borders than my original. And I'm going to put this one inside here. My cut line's a little unstraight there on the outside. I'm going to trim that. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's going to be pretty. So we'll put that down. Okay. We have noises. Uh, Ruth asks, you did a video a long time ago with Hunky Dory Beatrice Potter Toppers. Oh. Do you have any of them stashed in a box somewhere? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. Who asked that question? Ruth Ann. Ruth Ann. I'm so glad you asked that question. Do you know what we're going to do in December? We're going to look at our, I just put on the calendar, honestly, I can pull the calendar and show you. It's amazing you asked that question because we haven't done anything with Beatrice Potter for so long. I still have a wonderful collection of Beatrice Potter CDs that were produced by Crafter's Companion several years ago. And when, and I love Beatrice Potter, and when Crafter's Companion sold out of it, they gave me the opportunity to buy out the line, and I did that. 
I have the only CD I no longer have is Peter Rabbit, but I have Mrs. Tiggy Winkle and I have, you know, Jemima Puddle Duck and I have all of the CDs, Timmy uh, Tiptoe and all of them. We have all of them. Um, Tom the Kitten, we have all of them. Um, and we have Peter Rabbit in the Winter Tale collection, so he's not missing either. Anyway, we're going to look at one of those CDs in, um, December. in December. And if you and Teddy, you don't need to do it right now because Teddy's looking very comfortable and we'll be at this for a little while yet. When Teddy decides he needs to move because he looks just adorably cute in Bryce's arms right now, maybe Bryce will grab the, the um, CD for us. I believe it's sitting... It might be back here, but it could be over on the printer. Anyway, I pulled off the CD and I pulled one out of inventory and I thought, I just got to make sure that these are still viable and that the products are still good and that they'll still work with the computer. And, you know, I didn't want to sell one to anybody if it was dated. Well, it's not dated at all. And I printed some wonderful imagery off of it. And in December, we're going to do a class specifically on Beatrice Potter with these CD sets that allow you to reprint all of your own materials. So, yay us. So, it's going to be awesome. Really, really, really good. And I can't believe you asked that because I just put it on the calendar. <laughs> That's wild. Okay. I want my candy paper, my cotton candy paper, to be four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'm going to cut that next. That's wild. I can't believe you asked that. That's so much fun. Great minds, you know, working on the same lines. I'm going to start with this one at four by four and see if I'm happy with that. Yes, all the favorites are there. And we are the only ones that I know of in the U.S. that has those CDs still, both because they are long since retired and because they, we bought them out. We bought out everything they had at Crafter's Companion when they... It, what happens with Crafter's Companion is that they license a product for a particular period of time, and then when they when they um, finish up their license period, they may or may not renew those licenses for you know the coming period of time because each of those artists or each of those product lines that they license with costs them a lot of money, and they trade those out year over year, so they can only sell it for a particular period of time or they can only generate new materials for a particular period of time. And they had opted not to renew their license for Beatrice Potter, which is not unusual. It's nothing about Beatrice Potter. It just has to do with the ability to bring in new lines. And we were the fortunate beneficiary of that. Kim asked if it would be good for her students, would they be cute for her students? For... Um, how old are your students, Kim? I'm sure it will, actually. You just have to choose products that are going to, you know, projects that are going to be appropriate to the age of your students. You know, because it, products can be complicated or easy. And you just have to choose to design them in such a way that because you can do easy ones or more difficult ones, just design them that you think are going to be appropriate to the age of the kids you're working with. So, yeah. The nice thing about doing it with students is that you could read the Beatrice Potter book to them, and then all the characters are going to see, the they have the original art from Beatrice Potter. So you could read the stories together as a class and then do the projects of the characters and that's going to be very meaningful to the kids then because they will know the characters they're seeing in the in the videos did i move or did you move no. okay you moved okay good 
I said, how did I get that far off? <laughs> it happens. If you've watched any of our Christmas download videos, oh, Bryce is, gets so frustrated with me because I get excited and I'm showing stuff here and there and he's chasing me around the table with the camera trying to keep up with what I'm trying to show you. So he finally put tape marks on the table and said, you too, Margie, Deborah, you stay right there. <laughs> Do not move. <laughs> Okay, that's ready to go as soon as we're ready with our flowers, so let's construct that. I don't know if they're compatible with an apple. Do we know anybody with an apple we could test with? Let me read the packaging, Betty, and I'll find out if before we do that class if it's compatible with apple, okay? Use the papers to make books that the students help them write a story. Oh, build writing skills. That's a great idea. Really good. Really good. You want to see those before we move on since we talked about it? Bryce went and got them. This is what the CDs look like. I stuck mine back in the box or back in the cellophane because once you open it, it's, it the CD can slide out of the slip cover. They're really nicely done, slip covered. And you just open it up and it's got the CD inside. And it's got some detail on the back about what you're getting. I chose Mrs. Tiggy Winkle because I we have hedgehogs. I have a grand rodent. Hedgehogs aren't tit, aren't actually rodents, but that's what I call him. I call him my grand rodent. Jordan has a hedgehog, which he's totally wild about. Hi, Katie. <gasps> It's so nice to see you. Hey, I'm so glad to see you, Katie friend. Here's some of the cardstock I just printed off of that CD. I started with the, here's my decoupage images. Now you can see this is fussy cutting, but it's not terrible fussy cutting. Look at these, aren't they just magnificent? This is the original Beatrice Potter artwork. I mean, next time I do it, I'm going to have to adjust my page size just a little bit because they were um, designed to go on A4 paper, and I'm printing them on 8.5 by 11. Oh, well, we do love you, Katie, and I'm so glad to see you. Oh, that's just wonderful. Truly wonderful. Okay, yeah, look at this. Is that just beautiful? These, I just printed these off. This is off my home printer using my HP print, of course. But look, aren't they just amazing? This is just a small sample, guys. I mean, really, it's just a tiny sample of what's on this CD. And I'm going to build a class around it and show you how to use the CDs. Then we'll have all the CDs available. So, I'm so glad you asked that question. That is just marvelous, because I'm really excited about it, and I'm glad to see you guys are going to be excited about it. It's always nice, I, you know, I think, am I the only one, you know, <laughs> am I the only one that loves this? Clearly, I am not the only one that loves this, so hey. Okay, I've got my first layer. I'm not doing anything to it. I'm going to grab my second layer and I'm going to start clipping things out. Um, I'm going to take the tag off. Now I could still use the tag for a layer or two if I wanted to. It's only held on by just the thinnest of little lines there. So if I decide I want to put the tag on a layer or two, I absolutely can do that. This, I'm going to take this ribbon off just because this ribbon's a little harder to layer and I don't want to sit here and mess with the tiny, tiny foam squares while I got, I might do it if I were doing it just on my own, but while you guys are waiting on me, that could be irritating for you guys to watch. So we can clip that off. Um, maybe we'll keep part of the stems this time and just clip off the ribbon. I like to do it differently every time. So let's try and see how this works. Just take the ribbon off. Let's take off a couple of these background flowers. Maybe this one. 
this little red one in the back here we'll take that one out we'll take let's see what else is clearly clearly in the background we got this little bud back here I'll take that one off I'll wait for, for the next round to take this one off I think I'll take this bud here and leave the rose because he's clearly in the background oops it works better if you get the paper between the blades and the scissors before you clip <laughs> just a little tip I've learned guys um let's just for the heck of it let's texturize a little earlier this year just in case some of these layers end up showing shall we let's do that so let's get our bottle tool out again now I told you I'd tell you what to do if you didn't have a ball tool yes. if you don't have a ball tool look at your pencils and pens and look for something that's maybe rounded on the end like this one see what I mean or the even well this end's kind of dent this would dent it but this end is fairly round look at that i got a jewel there i'll put the jewel on my printer <laughs> or my die cutter this end is fairly smooth so you could grab something like that and i think this would work all right for texturing my ball tool i'm going to tell you the ball tool is going to be the best but i could probably get by with that at least a little bit or look at some of your paint brushes look at your pencils maybe a pencil with an eraser although the eraser might hold up a little bit let's see i have this one let's see about this one maybe something there. what did you come up with katie um pen gems, pen gems? okay that have the, the round end anything that's got a nice rounded end preferably a rounded end that's a little wider like the ball tool so look around and see what you have that has a nice oh makeup brushes now that might be a good one actually yeah, let's see what I have for oh this might be a good one too this paintbrush end here oh this is this is probably the best of what I found although still it holds up a little bit more than the ball tool I'd say the ball tool is going to be a good investment for you over time if you don't have one. But just look for something with a nice rounded end. I'm going to go back to doing this. I just wanted to have that discussion because I told you we'd try and come up with some things you could use. But see how easy that ball tool does that. I'm just pushing it in, rubbing lightly. The paper's giving a little bit because it has those nice score lines in the paper. And it's letting me round that out. It's as easy as that to texturize some flowers, guys. And you'd be surprised how often you use this technique making flowers. Are you heading out, Roseanne? It's Ruth so Ann. oh, Ruthann. It's so nice that you were here with us, and I appreciate you taking the time to visit with us on your Saturday. And we will see you on the rerun, huh? Thanks for stopping in. Okay, so let's round that a little bit more. And now I'm going to pull, pull my flowers forward, kind of push the foliage back. In the process of doing that, I'm kind of retaining the rounding on my flowers, but kind of um, straightening out the piece, so to speak, so that it will lay down on my on my decoupage so I've taken that and now it looks more like this okay and I've got this nice rounding to my flowers let's go ahead and put this down on our flat piece put some foam squares under it Does I figure out what I did with them Fortunately, I have a stash. <laughs> I always manage to lose my foam squares. Of course, I manage to lose about everything when I'm crafting, especially if I have witnesses. <laughs> I do all kinds of things here when, I, when you guys are watching that I don't usually do when I'm crafting. I mean, I create all these original designs where I, you know, sometimes I'm inspired by another artist. I might even see something in a magazine and recreate it, but... I do just fine when I have no witnesses. Then I get you guys on camera and I do all kinds of goofy things. But, you know, 
That's what happens when you have an audience. <laughs> You've heard me say it before when I used to teach. I'd walk up to the whiteboard. I'm a good speller. I really am. You may or may not think that after reading my newsletters, but that has more to do with typing skills than it does my ability to spell. <laughs> I'm actually a really good speller until I walk up to a whiteboard. And when I walk to a whiteboard, you lose all ability to spell. It just happens. I think Thelma could tell you that, huh, Thelma? And we have another teacher out there. Who's our other teacher? Diane? Is yeah. it Diane? One of you guys is, one of you guys is a teacher. Kim asked about the students. What's that? Kim asked about the first students. Oh, yeah, Kim, yeah. But I think Diane is a teacher, too. we got lots of teachers who are crafters. Anyway, um, you lose all ability to spell. It just happens. It just happens. <laughs> Yep. And I used to teach adults, which made it even worse. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Mary Glass, and no oh good, Mary. I'm always worried I'm accidentally going to tell someone off. That sounds like a good discussion. <laughs> even if your spelling isn't exact, you know what we mean. Thank you. Thanks for your kindness and <laughs> generosity. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. Sometimes we end up with something even better. <laughs> Look at your dog. Huh? This dog is laying over here in Bryce's arms. He's laying on his back with all four feet in the air. And he is just clearly loving it. He is out like a light. His, his paws are resting just below Bryce's chin. And he just, oh, I wish you could see it. It's so adorable. And did you ever find, Diane, if you walk up to the whiteboard, you lose all ability to spell? Uh, I... It, it happened to me more times than I can tell you. So on the first day of class, I'd usually laugh about it and say, it's going to happen, guys. And yes, your spelling has to be perfect. <laughs> you give me your resume, it better look great. <laughs> That's what I used to teach was career classes. And <laughs> I was very fussy about their spelling, grammar, punctuation, and then there's me these days. <sighs> okay, we have that one on. How beautiful is that? It's just gorgeous. Let's do another. Let's do another. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm going to take this white flower off this time. It's a really beautiful white flower, but away it goes. Off you go. And I'm going to take off. I think I already took off these two, so away these go. I'm going to take off the ones I took off before first. And let's see. What else did I take off? You got two layers there still. This bud's gone. And taking out this big white bud, which is tragic because it's really beautiful. But away you go. Snip, snip. You're gone. And all right. Now I gotta take out something else because it's time. Ugh, it's so hard. Okay, let's see. Uh, this little flower here is gone. Can you guys see okay? I hope you can. I got my camera in as close as I can come without having it right overhead and bumping my head into it. Some people have said, why don't you film from overhead? Because I'm really tall. And I get my head in the camera. <laughs> and I beat myself up when I'm filming online. 
So I either have to have the camera far enough away I can't lean into it. It really doesn't solve anything in the long run with me because I'm super tall. So there you go. That's why I choose to film from the side. Okay, we already took all this out, didn't we? So we can take all this out. And let's see. How are we doing? Did we take out enough to make it a separate layer? We really do have... Yeah, I think so. I think we're pretty good. Let's texturize this layer. <laughs> Every snip hurts. <laughs> oh. Okay, here we go. One reason I like using this big ball tool is because there's very little chance. I mean, you still could hurt it if you were if you were too too rough. But there's very little chance using this big ball tool that you're going to damage anything. It's quite easy to roll it around and you'll see the paper layers separate a little bit along the cut lines, but that's why they're cut that way, is to allow them to be texturized. Okay, you know, those cut done. those details in. So Avis excuse joined. me? Avis just joined. Hi Avis! Welcome! This is really a fun, fun, fun kit, guys. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. As much as I am. <laughs> I have actually several. My printer, I printed your extra pages off because, of course, we wanted to do more than the one um, flower that we got in our you know it had one layer in the magazine and then i wanted to be able to do more than one card so we went in and printed some extra pages to include in your kit off of the free downloads just to make it easier for you and not have to download and print before class and um uh my computer got shut and I have learned one of the things I've learned about my HP printer that is on the HP ink is that if I close my laptop while it's working, um, it stops the print job. So I closed my laptop and not realizing it was still printing and it stopped printing and I realized that so I opened it back up. Well, it restarted the print job and one of the print jobs it restarted was when was printing the um, purple background paper at least it was purple and I ended up getting an extra 25 of them <laughs> so and then the same thing happened when I was printing one of the rose sheets so I ended up with lots and lots of extra <laughs> extra prints so when time permits I need to sit down and make a whole bunch of extra cards for my Christmas card boxes because I have lots and lots of extra material left over from this class that needs to get used up. And I got lots of people in my life who want my cards. We've talked about that. We haven't talked about it for a while. Sometimes people ask me, what do you do with all your cards? Because clearly you make an awful lot of them. And I do. I make hundreds and hundreds of cards a year by the time that we finish all of our videos and our training and classes and one thing and another. I've made an awful lot. Because I make one set when I'm designing them. You know, I'm getting the class ready. Then I make another set with you. So I have twice as many as you have when we're, when we're done. And uh, so I have a lot of cards, but I need a lot because the favorite Christmas present of my family and friends is I give away big boxes of cards. I've given them a card organizer box that has tabs in it for birthday, anniversary, get well, thinking of you, Christmas. It's got some tabs in there that we put the labels on. And the first year I give them a box, I give them the organizer box full of cards. And then thereafter I give them, I get those um, decorative Christmas boxes. You know, you see them everywhere. The beautiful decorative Christmas boxes, by the way, just gorgeous. And I fill that up with cards. I put them in my little slip covers, the little, um, 
what is it, cellophane baggies, and I match the, the envelope that matches the card with it. I put them in those to keep them nice and organized and beautiful. And then I give them 30 or 40 cards, usually 30 to 40 a piece per year. Well, my list of people, recipients of those boxes, seems to grow every year. And I don't know, how many did we do last year, Bryce? About 10, 12? I mean, we're up to a large number. And some people get larger boxes and some people get smaller boxes. And then some people get enormous boxes. That's my mom, you know. She said, I want... I want some of these and some of these and some of these. <laughs> and about this time of year, my sister usually hollers and says, I'm out of cards, you know, I need some more of these and these. <clears throat> so each year I up her allotment. But that's their favorite gift for Christmas. So I'm working on it all year long. And then when it comes this time of year, I just need to take my boxes and I usually don't wrap those really beautiful boxes that I do. I've got my fourth layer here now, guys. And I... Oh, Mary says, before I go, I must see my baby. It must be done. Well, here we go. Let's see if you can catch this action across the table. I have to... But you can see the ribbon I talked about. There you go. Stop. You're too high. No, Slow I'm down. not. I can see the picture. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got too high there. I'm trying for you. There we go. That's that scene I was telling you about, guys. That's what's going on across the table from me. <laughs> okay. <That's enough. laughs> Bryce's camera shy. He's saying, okay, that's enough. But look at that dog. Does he look like he's in hog heaven or what? <laughs> this is the ribbon I was telling you about. As long as I got the camera already cattywampus, let me just go for it. <laughs> Did I tell you I had ribbon? <laughs> and you may be able to get a view of the squirrels out there on the deck. <laughs> Okay, now let me see if I can get it back in sweet. You know I love you when I'll do that for you. <laughs> we'll have to see if we can get our camera view back. <laughs> we were talking the other day about making snow globe ornaments for Christmas. And Mary reminded me that she needs a snow globe ornament of her surrogate puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put that on my to-do list because that's just <laughs> that's just too sweet. Isn't that puppy just looking happy? He has a good life, I'm telling you. Never did a pound puppy benefit so greatly as that one. <laughs> Us too, though, really, I got to say that. For as much as he benefits from being here, we benefit more because... He's our baby. We do love our animals. You guys probably got that got that hint somewhere along the line after about the 14th goat story. <laughs> we love our goats. We love our dog. We love our cats. We love our squirrels. Our whole squirrel infestation out there. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. Yes, that's a lot of ribbon. That's ribbon's going to go in our special boxes I put together for you, and they are going to be spectacular. Not something I use lightly. They are going to be amazing boxes of amazing ribbon at really, really good prices. I couldn't believe it. You know, I think that because of COVID and the fact that a lot of stores are not stocking for in-house traffic this year. My wholesaler had some prices on ribbon that I just, I couldn't get over. I just couldn't get over. But it is going to be more difficult to shop in the stores this year for, you know, some of our gift wrapping and stuff. But I don't think a lot of stores have bought it. So the wholesaler had 
just amazing prices. These boxes of ribbons started to come in, and Brittany started saying, Aunt Debbie, what are you doing to me? I can't, I don't have a home for that ribbon. <laughs> There's no room in the warehouse for that. What are you doing to us? And I said, Brittany, if you had any clue what I spent for that, you'd just be glad that I got it, because it's really, really beautiful. There is just some spectacular stuff in there. Tents, the ones on this side are kind of muted, and they're all in plastic bags, so you can't see them right now. But there's really some beautiful ones in there. And Kim says, we don't have an infestation. We just have a happy little gathering. A happy gathering of squirrels, huh? Yeah, okay. Well, they're happy, all right. <laughs> they're, they must be happy. They're hungry. Man. It's been fun to watch them, though. There are... Um, we were when surprised how many little pregnant females we've seen come through that you can clearly tell that they're nursing babies when they come through. You can, you know, at the risk of being crass, you can tell that they are <laughs> servicing their little groups of babies. I don't know, what do you call baby squirrels? Squirrels. Oh, and Bryce says squirrels, but I know there's probably a name for a for a gathering of squirrel babies they there's funny names for almost everything i'll have to look that up unless somebody knows do you guys know what they call a baby squirrel anyway okay i gotta do it i'm gonna take this one really beautiful rose right off the top this time why because it can be done and then we're just going to keep this like narrow roll through the middle this time but it's it's fun to see them, and I will tell you, those mamas with babies that come through, they're taking no guff off those younger squirrels and the other, the, the males and the other squirrels out there in the squirrel feeders. When mama comes and she wants her dinner, she chases off everybody. She's not having any patience for anybody getting between her and the chow. Katie looked up your squirrel question. And what is the name of a, courtesy of Google, a group of squirrels are called a scurry or a, what's it say? A, a scurry or a dray. Thank you, Katie. I knew there must be a name. And Mary wants to know if Teddy chases the squirrels. Teddy comes outside and, you know, um, he was, he was really into chasing the squirrels, but now they've kind of become an everyday occurrence, so he really doesn't give them much attention. He kind of moves on and lets the squirrels do their thing. Um, the squirrels really don't hold his interest too much. He'd much rather save his energy for chasing along the fence with the goat or... That's a sight to behold. You guys should see that when he's out there playing with his goat. And the goat seems to like it as long as they're on opposite sides of the fence. Same side of the fence, not so much. Because Ted tries things like jumping up on the goat's back and things. And the goat doesn't. He's not into that at all. But, okay. We've read Betty, Kim, and Mary of baby squirrels called a kit or kits. Now that sounds familiar. A kit, that sounds familiar. I've heard that before. Huh. I have heard that before. So I've rounded these out, guys. And then I've bent them between the flowers. I'm not taking the rounding out. I'm just bending them between the flowers a little bit to kind of level out my piece. Now I'm going to put my foam squares right into the indents. Has anybody been working along today? Does anybody have feedback on this on these flowers that's been working on them? Or are you guys going to do it later? I know a few of you said you got your kits. I was just curious if anybody's working along and if you had some film at 11. <laughs> They cut trees down years ago for a... You're off camera again. Oh, I'm off camera again? Because yeah. I moved the camera. <laughs> oh, well, you're off camera. Okay, I'm, now I'm back on, right? Yeah. 
Waiting for your new glasses? Well, clearly, I clearly need glasses because I, I get to talk to my optometrist on my next trip in and see what we can do about that mid-range vision. Oh, Teddy just gave a big stretch and those legs are just stretched as far out as they could possibly go right now. He is just a happy, happy little dog. It's actually kind of nice to get your cards watched. Let, let me make any blunders that I'm going to make and then put your kit together later because you can avoid any blunders I've made or make the version you like the best. So I can, I can see that. I can see that. Well, I'm anxious for some feedback once you guys get your kits because I think you're going to find that this is just great fun. Great fun. A mother and her young is the Dre. If Google can be trusted. I trust Google mostly. <laughs> now I want to make a squirrel card, she said. Um, okay. <laughs> I actually had an autumn squirrel die. And Brittany raised the issue of making squirrel cards for autumn and then I opted for other things and I think I'm pretty much done with autumn cards now because how many autumn cards can you use <laughs> we've made a lot <laughs> oh that is I think I like it where we started the layering even sooner because I think if if it's even possible we got more dimension from this one than we've gotten from any of them this is really quite beautiful you're at two and a half hours what's that I'm at two and a half okay well, we're just about done anyway. I'm going to put this flower on this background. Isn't that green and that pink striking together? I think that's fun. <laughs> Whoop. Okay. I like the chat too. I'm not sure this would be fun if it was all me. I mean, crafting's always fun, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun for me if I didn't have you guys out there making me laugh and, you know, participating along the way. I, I'm not sure I would be doing two classes a week if it weren't for having that chat feature available and being able to talk to each other because this is way more fun. I like doing the videos, but I like this better. I think um, the Deco Large Kit that I've promised to do, I am still working on that. I just, it's not going very fast because I keep taking time out to work on all the things we're working on in these twice weekly classes. But um, I am going to have that for you soon. I, I've moved it up on the priority list and I will have that for you soon. But I think I'm going to do that one in a video where I can just show you the finished cards because there's no really practical way to do a very large number of those cards in a class. So I think I'll do that in the video as I've done before with the Deco Large and just show you here's the toppers and here's what I made out of them. And then I'll do one demonstration as I have in the past. We'll do one set on camera so that you can see how I made the choices for the layers and things that make sense. Hi, Melody. Oh, something, uh, her message got censored. Can you? Oh, re she retracted it. Oh, that's okay. Melissa, not Melody. Melissa. Well, I, like I said, my glasses aren't behaving very well. Okay, here we go. We're gonna put this here and we're gonna put our bow on. Let's put our bow on so that our topper will stand up and we can see where we want to put her okay I, I want to show you this there we go you can see if you can see there's no well maybe you can see am I getting it in the right place yeah no going the wrong way <laughs> where is the camera on this phone there it is um, you can see that there's no longer any white on the back of my bow. That means it's ready to use. 
and I'm going to pop my bow on down here. And this time I'm actually using this bow as my stopper for my easel card because it works great. Might put a little bit of glue right under that tail because it doesn't want to behave. Or maybe I can put a little weight on it. Nope, gonna have to put a little glue under there. Regular glue is not recommended for holding your bows down, but for just tacking a little tail like that or, you know, making a piece behave, it's fine. Okay, now I'm only going to put glue on half of this, right? Because it needs to be able to stand up over the top of this. And in order to get my proper placement on this, I'm actually going to close this for a second. I'm going to find my center, and I'm only going to glue below that line. So I could glue this or tape it, whatever. But I don't want my glue hanging up over the back of my card, right? So I'm only going to glue the lower half. Now we'll pop this in place. I'm actually going to put it on the open card so I can find my center. Now I'll stand it back up and there we go. How gorgeous is that, guys? We did it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And we talked about this one and you guys are good to go on this one, right? Because we're about out of time, but I think you guys are pretty good to go with this. You're doing exactly the same thing in the layering of the flowers. We're going to put this, we're using just white behind here. And we're going to tip it on center just a little bit. I'm um, using the black shimmer paper behind it. And we're going to put that beautiful purple and green paper over the black shimmer. So there you go. All right. And let's move these out of the way, and I will show you what we got coming up. Because there's always something good coming up, as she said. There's always something. She's always got something. Well, yes, that's true. Because I always got something. But I'm pretty excited about what I got. Let me show you first our next class which is on Thursday night. We are going to continue with our embossing series. I showed you this one once before. This is done as a resist, which we've done before, but we're doing it in snowflakes this time. Looks like my bow tucked in just a little. Let's pull that bow tail out where it should be. That little loop down where it should be. Make it behave. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. And we're using these beautiful ribbon slider in the center, a snowflake ribbon, ribbon slider. So this one. And this one. This one, we're, um, this week's kit will include white embossing powder. And we're going to do a special technique here to get this beautiful color. You will have a stamp pad, but you'll notice that that is glittery. So we're going to put a, this on with ink, and then we're going to do a special technique to get our lettering glittery. So white embossing, um, a new stamp, we'll have embossing powder, a stamp pad. This week's kit also has this the Hot Off the Press Snowflake which is just gorgeous, the snowflake stamps, and then there's matching dies. And we're going to use the snowflake dies to make this last card, which is done in really unusual Christmas colors, which is why I love it. Yep, it's show and tell time. Show and tell time. We have this mercury paper. That's what it's called. There's no mercury in it, but it's what it look it's called mercury paper. We have mercury paper with this beautiful aqua. The mercury paper is done in aqua and gold, so we used aqua color and we embossed in gold onto the 
snowflakes. Then we cut them out with our snowflake dies. I did some layering with the two dies in the set. We made ourselves a banner that says let it snow. And then I added gold jewel dazzles just to brighten and bring things up. We also have this absolutely gorgeous glitter velvet ribbon in the back. Love it. So this is what's coming up for Thursday night's class, our stamping class. If you haven't joined us up to this point in time, you're welcome to join us. You may need a few supplemental supplies, which I will put in the listing with the kit. I, I Be sure, if you're joining us in the stamping class, that you pay attention to what is... Um, what is needed in addition to the class kit supplies because we're building a kind of a stash of supplies week to week in that class so you may need some things that are not included in your kit that we've done in prior weeks this is next Saturday this is Hortensia which is Hortensia is another name is it if i come back this way does it get me to center yes and now a little lower there we go i'm just trying to find my right placement so you can see and i'm not hiding the cards behind my face okay this is called hortension hortension is another name for hydrangea so we've got this beautiful card in this class now one of you and i would love to properly credit the person with the technique Somebody told me about the way to get five, four cards from one 12 by 12 piece of paper. I do not know now who told me that, so I wish I could credit you for the idea, but that's what we're going to do with this. I'm going to send you two 12 by 12 pieces of paper, and out of those 12, or those 12 by 12s, we're going to get eight cards. Yes, we're starting early on Saturday because we have eight cards, so we're going to be starting at 2 o'clock. This is perhaps my favorite, my favorite card in this series. Look at this bird looking up at the bird cage. These are done in chipboard. The chipboard will be included in your class kit as well as the, the um, glittered cardstock. This one. We have, this kit is full of sparkles and lavenders and these have this has chipboard blooms supplementing the blooms in the background these were great fun to make i have to say but then again i'm not sure i've designed anything i haven't said was great fun to make because i do have a lot of fun making them here's my butterflies this one says butterflies come to pretty flowers these are all 5x7s. I will have one in here that's less than 5x7 because I messed up, but yours is going to be 5x7. We'll make it 5x7 again in class. I just had to cut mine down because I dropped a piece of tape on it and it tore my paper. But, you know, you make the best of things. Isn't she beautiful? Beauty is truth, it said. This one says flowers. Uh, flowers are like friends. They bring color to your world. Wouldn't that be a beautiful card to send to a friend? Beautiful. We're going to make all eight of these. Oops, I missed one in the basket because it was smaller. This one is also going to use a different material. I don't know to what degree we can see it on camera, but we are going to experiment and play with um, something called what? Called Blaze Polish, Blaze Opal Polish. And you're actually getting a container of Blaze Opal Polish in your kit. It's a little tiny container, but it goes a long way. And you can see as I tip the card, see the um, shadows on the on the um, dragonfly and around the edge. This is actually a black cardstock, guys. And this is the fourth. This will be a five by seven card. Like I said, I had to cut mine down because I dropped a piece of tape on it, and I wasn't about to give up on the card, even though the paper tore. So. 
I made it smaller. But that's Hortensia. That's next Saturday. And there's lots of fun techniques. Learn to make four five by seven cards out of one 12 by 12 piece of paper. And learn to do opal blaze polish. Now I wanted to show you, this is, to, I'm just bringing in just a few of my smaller bows so you can see what we're going to do in the bow class. But I wanted you to be able to see some of the pretty bow styles we're going to learn to tie. They're similar to, this. the first few are going to be very similar to the bows we're tying on our smaller bow maker. We're just making them in a bigger size. So here's one style. Your ribbons will be different. Your ribbons will be different, but your bow styles, this did do a good job of showing the bow styles. Here's another small one. They're going to be gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, if I were actually hooking these down, I would be doing some things like rippling these ribbons a little bit and, of course, trimming my ends up. But I just thought I'd hold them up to the packages so you can see. What's coming up in the bow class? Look at this fun style. And I, I you know, I would foof them and make them perfect. They, these have been sitting around in the classroom and on my kitchen table for a while. So when they got moved, they kind of got flattened. I would put them on my boat, on my packages and make them beautiful. But you can still see the bow styles. So there we go. Here's another style we're going to learn to tie. These are all made using the We Are Memory Keepers bow comb. That one. Look at these. These are probably my favorite, and it uses the simplest ribbon, believe it or not. Look at this. Just look at this beautiful bow right here. Oops. Again, they're just... They need to be hooked down to a package and left in order to show their best. But look at that. How gorgeous is that, guys? There's one. Very pretty. I'm going to show you how to do these on a, on a bow. Bowl. I got a pom-pom bow here. Now I can do this much larger. This is actually a pom-pom bow that's made for this size box. So you can do these much larger, but we're going to do pom-pom bows. We have a couple more styles here. We have, we'll start with a very, very simple bow. Some of these would be great. Imagine some of these guys on um, on hair clips too. Very simple bow. This one probably won't match this package beautifully, but it is a gorgeous bow. <laughs> the beautiful thing about the wired ribbon we'll be using, we'll be using both wired and unwired ribbon actually. Some of the styles are in unwired ribbon too. Like the set green satin was not wired ribbon. But look how beautiful this bow turned out. Is that gorgeous? I'm not sure about the colors together, but oh my, 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 my. And this beautiful thing, look at that. They're just gorgeous. Again, your ribbons that we're talking about in class and my new samples when we go into Vogue class will be different, but I did promise to show you what I'd been working on. And let's see, I had, did I have one more? No, I guess that was it. Those are just the samples I brought over. I actually have many, many more samples, but I just wanted to give you a taste because you guys have been asking when, when for the boat class, when for the boat class. I'm going to put out a schedule soon, maybe um, within the next week or so I'll put out a schedule 
of at least a rough schedule of what we're going to do through the end of the year. So you can get a, you can get kind of an idea of what our holiday schedule and stuff is going to look like too. So that's what I have to share today. If you like this class and you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know that it was worthwhile to you, that you're enjoying what we're doing, and that it's fun for you. Um, that little thumbs up is right below your screen here. Just hit that little thumbs up button. And um, let's see. If you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, the newsletter sign up is in the class description right below this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, you might want to do that. And if there is any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, this is a good time. I'll give you just a second to see if anybody has any questions. While you do that, I will stickle. Uh, where do you find the bow maker? I'm going to, uh, we have, we will have the bow makers available on the website, Stephanie. Um, and I'm going to offer some special deals for both the bow maker and some of those amazing ribbons, the amazing ribbon deals I got from my wholesaler. I started to tell you that because they've had so many less people placing orders for walk-in traffic at their stores that they offered amazing prices on holiday ribbons already. So I have in that vast array of ribbon on the table, I have some spectacular ribbons that are going to be offered at really, really good pricing along with the bow maker. So you'll be able to buy the bow maker plus a stash of ribbon or even you, you will be able to buy the kit, and then I'm actually going to have some supplemental kits that are available if you just want to buy some extra ribbons. So in the absence of any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, I will say happy anniversary to Kim, because I know that's coming up before we meet again. And I appreciate you spending any time with us, and I'll just say goodnight, Gracie. Goodnight, Gracie.